You're not a revolutionary force on this planet. You are not a big, bad, tough guy. You're a soy-faced podcaster. I'm saying it. We're in a historic time because we are currently in a podcasting renaissance for dudes with terrible opinions. And this is why women should stop having sex. True. It's scientific. Have you heard this? No. Studies have recently shown that women who engage in sexual activity are at increased risk of ruining the vibe. I know <laughs> that's right, right brother. <laughs> um, Bro, bring it back. And not texting me back. You know, that reminds me, because I heard a guy shouting on the subway this morning. <laughs> King, that women are actually a psyop from the government what to mind control society and that Hiya. is why they have boobs we got to get this guy on now i don't know where this trend started probably like 34 ad but i know it's reached a boiling point recently with fresh and fit which as far as i can tell is a podcast about calling women dumb this is the perfect example that you can be dumb as a girl and make it through life bro. What? No. fresh and fit revolutionized the misogyny podcast format instead of just having two men talk amongst themselves about meat or whatever they bring on 10 women to talk over and when they're not yelling at them they're asking the women leading questions about promiscuity if you didn't care and it didn't matter you would say your body count but it does matter which is why you don't want to say it no it's point. just because it's private whether they would give up instagram for a man i think if you're in a serious relationship with a girl she should not have an instagram that's cheating especially if she has scantily clad photos of herself on the internet and she's not making money off of it which a lot of women tend to do and why their standards are too high do you think women in general today are um realistic or delusional about their dating standards on um... what they want and what they think they deserve and if the women disagree with the host or he just got up on the wrong side of the bench press they get kicked off the show <laughs> there's a full supercut of myron getting emotional and kicking women off the show by the way emotional is the correct term there Myron is hysterical. He's emotional. Ironic because, like, he consistently claims that the women that he opposes on his podcast are the ones who are emotional. But he's the emotional one. He's such a bitch. Men overwhelmingly prefer a girl that is not promiscuous and doesn't come with a past. Okay. That's a fact. That's not my opinion or what I think. It's men, if given the chance, would prefer a girl that isn't promiscuous. Okay. Or has a past. Okay. So that's not small-minded. Okay. Yo, get the f*** off the show, bro. Because that's what big, strong men do when faced with adversity. They kick their enemies off their podcast. It's a tale as old as time. Ed too, Brutus? Get out of the studio, Caesar. Bro, just let me finish talking about these aqueducts. I unplugged your mic. Bro, that's just rude. <laughs> uh, okay, Al. <laughs> but I don't want to talk about Fresh and Fit anymore. No. Because it's too black. That's a joke, of course, but where the Fresh and Fit podcast is shot at night, often has on women of color to embarrass, and stars two black guys named Myron and Fresh. The Whatever podcast, which the rest of this video is about, is the exact opposite. It's shot in the day, there are far fewer guests of color, and it's hosted by a white guy named Brian. Though, for flavor, he does stylize his name as Brixen. I don't know why, but what I do know what? is that they're gentrifying misogyny podcasts now, and that's cool. Oh, and for those who are getting a little uncomfortable right now, I'm allowed to make these jokes because I don't know if you noticed, but I also have a podcast. But before we get into that, let's talk about today's sponsor, Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutrition head to it's really good promo code Jarvis 50. I got to do is I, I still have to do this podcast. I haven't done box. it. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Oh, now, I will be doing, I will, I will be doing the Jarvis podcast. Guest to assert his masculine dominance, like fresh and fit, Brian grumbles meekly while looking off screen for reassurance. Their co-hosts also share similarities. Fresh, who has a real name, I presume, but they just call him Fresh, is mostly a background player to Myron and often defers to his lead. On the flip side, Brian's co-host is also deferential to his lead by virtue of the fact that she is a sex doll named Kiki. I'm your host, Brian Atlas. I'm joined by my co-host, Kiki. She's a bit shy. Okay, a few quick announcements. Brian introduces her like that in every episode. And it's, oh, it's so funny, dude. <laughs> the format of the Whatever podcast may sound familiar to you. The host brings on a panel of entirely too many guests, stretching the limits of how many sure SM7Bs can fit on a table. The show then asks incredibly original and hard-hitting questions like, what is your body count? What's your body count? Body count doesn't matter. What's your oh, body count? Oh my God. 
Lazy bones. Would you give up Instagram for a man? So would you get rid of your Instagram or social media for a marriageable man? In this last one, I marriageable. <laughs> never heard before. Why are women's standards so high? An investigation. You know, for a podcast about modern dating, they sure do talk a lot about traditional values. What do you think is when men have that's like not unfairness equal. towards yeah, men? Yeah, yeah. Like I understand, like um, the draft. I was wondering what other. You mentioned the draft, so yes, men are the exclusive subjects. Yes. Of military conscription. Women are. My man is the best, dude. Literally, anyone over the age of thirty-five should not be able to vote. He's not wrong. Let him cook. 18 to 35 is the only people that should vote in the goddamn elections, dude. Okay? He's not wrong. Step aside, Draft King. This man is the new Draft King, okay? He's right. He's right. Only won't be able to vote, though. No, I'm not 35 yet. I can still vote. You're 35, you can't vote. Get your old ass out of the fucking voting booth, okay? Girl I had a crush on went on the whatever podcast. I hope your crush ended thoroughly after that. Like, I hope you still do not maintain a crush on a girl that went on the whatever podcast, okay? Are entirely exempt. Men throughout all of human existence have been 99.999% of military casualties. Just on this sole grievance, I would say that the suffering it's funny because, like, bro, you're not a South Korean incel. You know what I mean? You're a fucking American incel. What draft are you talking about, idiot? Like, this is... Like, I've heard this argument from South Korean men's rights activists, right? Like, where are you coming from? What do you mean, dude? You're in America. There's no fucking forced military conscription. Shut the fuck up men have experienced when it comes to warfare outweighs all of women's collective grievances probably at that which is also pretty funny because like bitch you ain't going to war shut the fuck up i hate this argument it's like oh men have the capacity to go to war women don't it's like dude you're not going to war you're a fucking bitch ass podcaster who gets off on fucking yelling at dumbass women who want to promote their only fans audiences to an audience of fucking incels. You're not a revolutionary force on this planet. You are not a big, bad, tough guy. You're a fucking soy-faced podcaster. What the fuck? I hate this shit, okay? I know what I'm doing. I'm a Twitch streamer, dog. Make no mistake. I don't feel LARP as like a revolutionary or whatever. I tell you very clearly. I'm a dumb himbo with a fucking stupid ass podcast two podcasts as a matter of fact and a twitch stream these guys on the other hand are like i'm a big bad tough guy men go to war men go to war it's like no bitch you're not going to war okay maybe you're going to war with hygiene but that's it you know basic hygiene that's what you're going to gave up will neff oh you think our podcast is stupid Yes, that's what I'm saying. Listen, objectively, if you have a podcast, that shit is gay as fuck, okay? It's soy. You have a podcast, you're soy. That's it. I don't make the rules. I have two. I'm the soyest motherfucker on the planet. Okay? I'm sick and tired of these PUA guys and all these, like, red-pilled guys who are like, dude, I'm a big, bad, tough guy. I I'll go to war. It's like, dude, and it, by the way, you want to know something else? David Goggins, soy as fuck, okay? Has a podcast, objectively soy. Uh, all of those fucking Navy SEALs guys who are, you know, done killing 14-year-olds and, and now write books, soy as fuck, okay? You're soy. Joe Rogan, you're fucking soy. You're bald and you're soy. Why? You have a podcast. Jocko Wilnick, soyest motherfucker on the planet, dude. He wakes up at 4 he wakes up at 4 a.m. every day. Why are you waking up so early to suck dick? That's why. You thumb. You fucking thumb looking motherfucker. You're soy as shit. Okay. I wake up at 4 a.m. every day so I can suck some cock and then do my fucking uh, podcasting. Okay. I need more. I need more fucking time out of the day to do more podcasting. You have a podcast. You're soy. Shut the fuck up. Done. You're not a warrior thousand times over. 
I'd encourage all of you to watch All Quiet on the Western Front. I do love listening to talk of the horrors of war while... He said, watch All Quiet on the Western Front to understand why men should only have the right to vote. It's so funny. You First of all, you missed the point, dumbass. You, you missed the point, okay? You literally missed the point. It's an anti-war movie because war is fucking stupid and irrelevant and bad and dumb. And it's ironically also done by other people's children, okay? Not you. You're the podcaster. It's, it's not the generals that are fighting. It's not the politicians that are fighting. It's the children that are fighting. That's the point of the movie and the book. And you missed it. You missed that point. The point of the movie and the book wasn't like only they should get to vote. The drop comes in. So in this clip, the guest acknowledges that war is bad and a, a mandatory conscription is a form of oppression and is asking for other forms of oppression that men face. And Brian's response is to just go on and on about the draft. Also, women weren't really allowed to serve in combat throughout history, in America at least, you know, because they were supposed to be rearing children and taking care of the home. And when they could enlist, it was as a secretary or a nurse. And to do combat, they would have to pull a Mulan. Or huh. I think you ladies should all watch Apocalypse Now so you can understand the male condition better. Yeah. This goes in, in the long list. And this is an entire fucking genre, okay? This goes on the long list of dumb motherfuckers who think because they're talking and, and proselytizing about, like, men being big, big bad men, okay? that they themselves should be perceived as big bad men. You're not a big bad man, okay? You got a fucking SM7B. You got a roadcaster. You can't be a big bad man and have a roadcaster, okay? You can't. You can talk about it all day, every day, but you're not a big bad guy. If you want to be a big bad guy, put the fucking microphone down and do some big bad things, okay? That's it. Or a, she's the man, depending on how aggressive you view men's soccer. Also, the reaction shots here are like exclusively of women giving blank stares while Brian goes on and on about the draft, which I'm sure a lot of women recognize this stare. And it's funny to me because they edited this themselves. <laughs> Brian does not come off well in this. And this is on the official TikTok page. He really told those ladies about men's suffering. I don't know that he did. So you said one of your big issues is that men cheating right hey you're a film major misogyny podcaster touting we used to go to war well what's stopping you wars are still happening dumb mother go die go die in trench warfare in the ugliest grayest ukrainian town you've ever seen go die you can do that go liberate ukraine motherfuckers are out here acting like wars are no longer being done it's like no it's not happening on your fucking door side so that's why you don't know that it's happening. It's happening. Go die to a drone dropping a grenade on your fucking head, okay? You can do that. That's something you can do right now. Stop talking about it. Go die. Go die. Go die. Go die. Go die in a war right now. Don't say men used to die in wars. Men still in die. That men still die in wars. Go die in a war. If you could find a guy that you, let's say, in magical world, you guaranteed knew that he would never cheat on you. His one condition, though, is that you could... In a game? No, I'm not... No, there is no... I'm not saying in a video game. I'm saying, like, in real life. He's saying he men used to die in war. There are wars right now. Why aren't you dying in them? You want to know why? Okay? You want to know why you're not dying in the war? Because you don't want to die in the war. That's the point. You're not a big bad guy dying in a war. You're fantasizing about all the guys that are dying in the war. Meanwhile, those guys aren't fucking dying in the war because they want to be big bad men. They're, they're fighting out of necessity, okay? Or they're fighting because they're forced to. That's the whole point of, and I'm bringing it back to the same fucking thing that we were talking about. That's the whole point of all quiet on the Western Front. That was literally the point, which you missed. You're too fucking stupid could not go out to bars, clubs, and parties anymore, ever. Would you be with that man? Absolutely not. Oh, there it man. is. There what it is. What do you mean? Of course not. That's controlling. And I'm not here it's for that. Not, it's it's not. Welcome back to Women Be Crazy Contestant 2. Final question. Would you give up all of your personal freedoms for a man who takes out the trash? No. There it is. Got her. Guards, 
Take her away. Hey, that's all we have for this week on Women Be Crazy. Tune in next week where we ask three hot singles if they spend a year in a dungeon for their man's fantasy team. See you next time. It's so funny to me that the context for finding a man who doesn't cheat is a magical world. Like, it's so unbelievable. It's fiction. The mythical wizarding world has everything, which is warlocks, a guy who keeps it in his pants, fantasies of your wildest imagination. Sorry. I'd also like to point out the guy at the end of this clip. It's, it's not, it's, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> you're literally controlling what your significant other can do because of your- I can't get over the all quiet on the Western Front reference because it's quite literally about a fucking group of teenagers who are like, oh, men should die at war for the honor of the fucking uh, German Empire who literally were like, oh, fuck, never mind. We're dying for the- for, for some dumb shit in France, we never got the glory or the pillaging that we thought we were going to get. Like, like, that's the whole point of the fucking movie. What the fuck? I can't, I can't stop thinking about how stupid you can be. Presenting like, all quiet on the Western Front, you need to watch it. It's gruesome. It's gruesome. It's so bad. Uh, I mean, it's just war is so bad. It's quite literally about volunteering for something that is so fucking objectively awful for some unrealized and and completely ridiculous understanding of 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 uh this this empire that is supposed to be beautiful and and big and brave and and plunder the land like there are so many moments where you're like you're 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 thinking that like the french women are going to come want to fuck you because you're so good Okay, you're you're so big and bad and bold and brave, like that's what you're gonna do. And then you realize, like, oh no, French women are not gonna fuck me. I'm gonna get fucked by a bayonet. Okay, what the fuck? Your own insecurity that they'll cheat on you. It's textbook controlling behavior. I don't know what to tell you, Chase. But hey, these guys always claim that they're being taken out of context on clips that they edit themselves. So I went ahead and found the full episode, which was not easy, by the way. It's not like it's labeled or anything. I had to go one by one. And when I finally found it, the episode was three and a half hours long. And the context was worse. Not, it's, it's, it's not. Here, here, here's the thing. Here's what Brian's getting at, okay? If I find a girl that I want to make my wife, and I find her super attractive. Make your wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that's what I would do. I would make her my wife. I yeah, because that's what I would do. I would make her my wife. Jessica, is that your name? Yeah, that's my name. I'd like to make you my wife. Oh, I mean, I'm flattered, but we just met. Not asking. Guards. Hey, you are a feminist. You're 100% a feminist. <laughs> that is fem you are a little feminist, aren't you? Look at me. Equal rights. Blah, blah, blah. She has opinions. This is adorable. If I found some great woman, she's beautiful. I want to make her my wife. Okay. If she's like, yeah, I, I want to go out to clubs all the time without you, it's like, okay, I, I, I don't want that because what happens is beautiful women go to clubs and they get hit on by chads. And I'm scared. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I've said this so many times, but like 98% of commentary from like the men's rights guys can be reduced to like how deeply insecure they are about their own sexuality, how deeply insecure about their how deeply insecure they are about their own prospects, how deeply insecure they are about not being an adequate partner. It's a, it's a constant fucking back and forth where they're just like, oh, what if there's other sexy guys out there? What if they got, you know, better dicks than me? What if they fucking make more money than me? Like, your worth to your partner wouldn't be just your material possessions or, or any of those insignificant things if you didn't have such a transactional understanding of relationships, okay? You insecure fuck. I hate the stupid advice that these guys are giving to other also insecure men. It's so fucking dumb. God damn it. Thank you for the 50 gifted subs, 34 MKD 50. Have you ever been cheated on? That seems to be the biggest fear these manosphere guys are afraid of and cause them to snap. I have not been cheated on, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I know it would fucking suck, right? Here's the one. Uh, here is the fucking halfway point, by the way. I'm going to give you a one minute ad break in the middle. Um, I love the answer always is that you know of like that's just that's a you thing, dog. Okay. 
I just, I, I love that. I love that idea. It's like, no, if I've been cheated on, so you must have too. You just don't know about it because your, the, the, your partner who cheated on you was just like better at hiding it. You know what I mean? It's just like, nah, that's just you. You're, you're reinforcing that paranoid behavior. Okay. Anyway, you, you might be trolling, but there's plenty of people in the, in this sphere of podcasting that legitimately do believe that. I don't want a Chad to steal my wife. There's no way my wife could resist a Chad. Look at him. This worldview is so common in these. Yeah, you would not get cheated on. Well, by the way, this is, I'm not just saying like, okay. Or are we. I want to make something clear. Okay, cheating is bad. It's wrong. It's immoral. If you've been cheated on, it's not your fault. Okay? Understand that before we move on. Unless you're that guy. If you're that guy, you got cheated on because it's your fault. Straight up. Okay? I'll say it. If you got cheated on and you're that guy, it's your fault. Okay? You pushed your partner aside. You were a nervous wreck all the fucking time. And your relationship was spiraling out of control. And, you know... Uh, your partner decided this is the only way I can, uh, this is the only way I can just like bring some, some, some control back into my life. Okay. Circles and it's rooted in insecurity. Like if your girlfriend is getting attention from men, which you feel is threatening and your response is to control her access to the world, then that's just controlling and very insecure. This woman then clarifies that she's only talking Dog, I love you, but this ain't it. <laughs> no, uh, this is it, okay? In 99.9% .9 of circumstances, you're, is, you're not at fault for being cheated on, except for those guys, <laughs> okay? Sorry, get mad at that all you want. It's true. Talking about going out with their friends, but that shouldn't even matter, because if your relationship is... The motherfucker said, uh, dog, this ain't it. Even if you don't do that, you could still be cheated, to be fair. Oh my God. Oh my God. I hate having this conversation. I hate having most conversations on, on Twitch, but especially this one, because I'm not having a conversation with a human at this point. I'm having a conversation with your insecurity demons. Okay. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about your own personal experiences. I hate having motherfuckers trauma dump in the chat and I have to like, I have to fight their trauma demons. Like I have taken the form of their trauma demons and I'm just like tormenting them now. Holy fuck. Jesus Christ, dude. How do you not lose your mind? I have, I've lost my mind. That's why I do this every fucking day of my goddamn life. Okay. Only surviving because your girlfriend hasn't been in the same room as a Chad, then you're in the wrong relationship. Trust is a fundamental part of relationships, and these men seem to fundamentally lack it. They believe that if their partner tells them that they won't cheat, then they're fucking lying, and they're actually always looking to cheat. And so then they have to quote unquote yeah. mitigate risk, but I'm sorry, that's just a banana's way to live your life. Here's an idea trust your partner, and if they. Okay. Jarvis is such a fucking Hasanabi head. Come on, dog. That's a, that is a, that, that, oh my God. That's a banana's way to live your life. Okay. They break that trust, have a conversation or break up. It is a much healthier alternative than locking them in a anti-Chad fortress. If you because go out once or twice no. a year no. with like it's some birthday party, I think that would be okay, right? Chase? Yeah, it's fun. I'm not saying you can't go anywhere. You can go to one or two birthday parties a year, right, Chase? Like this woman has to ask Brian and Chase if she's allowed to go outside. These guys are so transparently sad i don't know why they don't realize that the hottest normal most person equals hassan i head first of all i i do know jarvis is a hassan i head i'm a jarvis head that's why i know that's number one number two i wasn't talking about his take i was talking about the term he used and i feel like most people don't say bananas or bananas mode i i just i don't know maybe i'm wrong most confident thing a man can be is by trusting their partner being like oh yeah babe go have fun go do whatever because 
we have such a strong relationship that we're always going to come back to each other and there's there's love and trust between us you know what i mean or you could even be like oh yeah nobody does it like me babe i'm like the best in town all of this i'm so sorry by the way nobody's gonna cheat on that and if she does she's missing out on all of have i mentioned all of this <laughs> they're so threatened by a woman's independence and it, it's really like i don't know it reveals a lot about their worldview i don't go to bars clubs parties so and i think that's the case with chase too it is by the way not going out is fine preferring a partner with similar like habits is fine but the projection happening here is uh 4k hd it's showing it's in imax we're in a theater it's in the yeah why can't he just say like why can't he just say like i don't like going out so i want a partner who also doesn't like going out because if he were to say that, then that's normal. You know what I mean? It's like, that's perfectly valid. But he's like, I don't like going out. And if my partner wants to go out, that means she's a whore. She wants to fuck chads. She wants to suck and fuck chads. There's a chad right now out there waiting for my potential partner to go outside so he can put his fucking dick in her. And he's going to give her the best orgasm of her life. She's never had an orgasm like that. And I'm going to sit at home and think about that the entire time. Oh, God. Like, it's just cuck shit, dude. You're insecure, okay? You're just so fucking insecure. Calm down. It, it, it is projecting. You see the, the simile? Also, Brian does go to bars, and I know this because he tells the saddest stories about it. If a woman goes to a bar or club, one guy, at least one guy, a couple guys are going to hit on her. Also, the sex doll thing and the fact that they cut to the sex dolls in their shorts as if to get a reaction shot is like the most like transparent objectification of women the woman that co-hosts his podcast is actually an object you know what i mean like that's ridiculous that's a little on the nose i think if a guy goes to a bar or club just goes in the corner right nobody's gonna talk to him the entire night he's gonna sit there stand there all alone he's just gonna be in a corner no one's gonna talk to him the entire night no one's gonna ask him about his podcast or where we got so many cool flannel shirts. They'll just look and they'll point and they'll say, look at that loser, Brian. Uh, <clears throat> look at that loser, Ryan. That's his name. His name is different than mine because he's not me. This time you can even see the women holding back a laugh because of how pathetic this is. Official TikTok, by the way. The whole podcast feels like him describing his negative experiences with women and then looking for their validation. So are you guys familiar with the dating app Bumble? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, so Bumble <laughs> is a dating app where the girl has to message first. Very familiar. And with that. Uh, I was on there for a bit. I'm not on there anymore. But my experience on Bumble is finally, women, y'all have the power. <laughs> Ninety percent of the first messages I got were, "Hey," and I had a fucking interesting as fuck profile too. <laughs> like if it was me seeing that profile, I could come up with like ten different things. Dude, that's the best. I love this. Dude, this is like Tim Pool talking about like, I don't have a girlfriend. It's not me. I'm not the problem. Surely. Surely it's the women. Surely it's society. It's like, hey man, you might be the problem, dog. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep it a buck 50. You know, it's awesome. That's awesome. Whenever they talk about their own personal experiences, it's, it's always great. Because then you get to see what these guys actually are like and where their grievances come from, right? And there are so many people on the planet that also feel the same way. And instead of engaging in any kind of self-examination, instead of having any kind of like positive outlook about how anyone can be a seven, right? I used to say that all the time back when I used to do Chad Vices. We haven't done it in a while. Any guy can be a seven. Everyone's a seven, okay? You just got to work towards it. Not the, not the seven thing again. It's true. It's fucking true. Okay? It's absolutely true. 100%. Instead of operating like that, guys are just like, everything sucks. I'm sad all the time. Look at all my sad stories about dating apps. Yada, yada, yada. And it's happening exclusively because everyone else is wrong. I'm in the right. I've done everything right. Everyone else is wrong. They've done everything wrong. It's women that are at fault. I could open up with. My profile was interesting as fuck, dude. I had theorems, postulates, 
there was a map to a treasure, not to mention a photo of me holding a big fish, and all you can say is, hey, <laughs> women don't, they don't deserve rights. Right, ladies? Now that you've gotten a bit of a taste of whatever it is they're cooking, let's look at the raw ingredients that make up the whatever smoothie. You've got Brian on the mic, his laptop held up by some of the great wars of history, World War I, World War II, A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, George R.R. Martin. You've got Kiki on the mic. She's shy. She's also not on the mic. In this corner, you've got OnlyFans models and literal college students. They think they're on a fun show about dating, but surprise, they're gonna debate Chase. On every episode, there's always a Chase. And by Chase, I mean a conservative content creator who Brian has brought on to debate Dude, look at this lineup, dude. Fucking hell. How do you look at your squad and these are your homies and you go, we're doing fine. I I'm going to run that again. Yes. They think they're on a fun show about dating, but surprise, they're going to debate Chase. On every episode, there's... Look at this. Look at this. Steroid Daniel Radcliffe. I don't know. This is the most accountant looking man on the planet. You got uh, a dude who swapped races harder than Ariana Grande, okay? You have a uh, used car salesman who thinks he's fucking Patrick Bateman. There's always a chase, and by chase, I, mean I don't even want to know what this guy's on. Being a conservative. Oh, come on, dude. Really? Really? What the fuck? What is that? What even am I looking at? What the fuck is that? How do you look at that and go... That's my guy. I'm getting all my info from that guy. Dude, what the fuck? What is that thing? What is that? It's like, like wannabe, wannabe Johnny Depp. What's happening here? Holy fuck. Some say it's statutory. I say it's mandatory head ass. True. He look like you. I look like that to you. That's what I look like to you. Get your fucking eyes checked, man content creator who Brian has brought on to debate his guests for him because he's not so good at it. Um, this isn't always the case, but more often than not, the show devolves. In we got non-consensual Nick on the podcast. What's up, guys? My name is non-consensual Nick, and today I'm going to teach you how to riz up your daughter's friends. All right, that's right. First step, you got to cut some apple slices, okay? Second step. I know that there's a restraining order against you and Deborah, your bitch ass ex-wife decided you're no longer allowed to see your daughter because you've been creeping out all of her friends, but that shouldn't stop you because as long as the, as long as the baseball game, the softball game that your daughter's playing at is 500 feet away uh, from your school, well then there's no issue there. You can go there actually legally. They can't stop you from going there. Also, fun fact, a restraining order doesn't necessarily mean there's like a real preventative barrier. You can still violate that. You know what I'm saying? This is not legal advice. <laughs> but you could technically still go to the school that your daughter's at and hit on all of her uh, girlfriends. That's normal. That's You can do that. And back in the day, they used to write rock songs about it, and it was so normal. And you should do that, actually. It's good. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> into Brian's conservative guests debating with sex workers and college girls who are just trying to have a good time. I like to go out. When I go out, I'm not going out looking for a guy. Yeah. I'm not exactly. going out looking to flirt. I want to jam. That's what girls say. Time. Like Mr. Make You My Wife, Chase, is a super conservative God guy on Twitter with a big following and hashtag pure blood in his bio, which I thought was a race thing, but it turns out it's just a COVID. Uh, no, it's anti-vaxxer. Come on, man. You got to know pure blood means they did not get vaccinated. Thing. Awesome. Oh, and hashtag Bitcoin. Why is it always crypto bros? <laughs> I, I did, they're catching a stray here for some reason. And then, of course, he had on that guy that defended domestic abuse. Trigger warning for that. You can't divorce. That's not a real thing. Even though it might be like physically yeah, abusive. Because you got to endure. People are too. People yeah. nowadays I'm gonna be honest. are just. Situation. For anyone that might be in that situation, what would you recommend? Okay. Yeah, it's not the. It's not the dude that's doing domestic abuse that's a pussy. It's the wife that chooses to leave the dude for domestic abuse. You know? Oh, what a pussy. <laughs> Just fucking eat it, dude. This, 
You know what you eat at the end of this? You eat visine, okay, in your soup. That's what you eat, okay? There's two ways out of this. If you're a fucking abusive piece of shit, you either eat visine until you fucking cough blood and die at the dinner table, or you get a divorce paper served. I think the divorce paper is pretty much the, the, the better, more humane alternative, okay? I'm just saying. Bro, it's literally all the debate bros that debate bros that bright tubers. Hey, the whole squad is weird. I found this expired casting call for the podcast where they really just say it's a podcast about modern dating and relationships. So it did say that you could bring a girlfriend with you, but what it didn't say is that if you carpool, Brian will kick you all out together. Leave. If you let your girl go alone to the club, 100% she's getting hit on, and 70% chance she's getting piped. Can't tell you how many cheating girls I've slammed out for quickies working in a club. Motherfuckers watching sissy hypno porn every night. I don't get why you're pausing. Because that's your fantasy, brother. You've never done that. You're just fantasizing about it. Okay? What do you mean slammed out, dude? What are you, a fucking frat bro from 1997? What the fuck are we talking about? Slam pieces, bro. These fucking broads. I'm slamming them. Okay, stop role playing. You're in the real world. I totally believe this stud. No, yeah, no, totally. Dude, I'm fucking slamming these slam pieces, dude. I'm a fucking horn dog. I'm I'm eating barn, dude. I'm fucking woo. Yeah, I got a lasso, brother. I'm fucking wheeling and dealing. I'm fucking bringing them in, dude. Come to Miami. Bitch, I fucking lost my virginity in Miami, okay? That's all you need to know. I know Miami. This is a ridiculous take to have, regardless. That's one of the funniest parts about these conversations that I have with people who are, uh, you know, making this stuff up or fantasizing about this stuff or even talking a big game about, like, how much experience they have with women in relationships is that I demonstrably have more experience. Like 1 million percent more than you and your dad combined. Just because I don't talk about it that much doesn't change that reality, okay? If you're saying stuff like, I'm crushing push with the boys, dude. I'm slamming them. No, you're not. You're not doing that. You are absolutely just making this up. You have created an image in your mind of a guy who like fucks puss, okay? And then that's what you're writing in the chat, okay? That's all you're doing. You've been relevant for like five years. What? You are talking about getting laid like Austin talks about having sex with women when he wants to be a bro. Okay. That's what you're doing. <laughs> you're being cringe. Don't make fun of me. Don't make fun of me. I'm slamming puss. <laughs> Miami club scene. I'd be happy to show you around. I promise. There are whores here. <laughs> Ladies are going out. And I'm slamming them. <laughs> I'm not banning this guy. I love this guy. Thank you for, thank you for uh, telling me. You'll show me around the Miami club scene. Okay. Austin has at least had sex with a woman before. That's true. Austin has had sex objectively with more women than that chatter. <sighs> Didn't you literally work in promotions? I did. Again, something that I don't talk about too much because it's fucking cringe. Okay? Incredibly cringe. Cringe. 
Sparta! All right, I have to take her with me. That's fine. So stay woke, ladies. Get an Uber. But I do think the majority of the guests come from Instagram. I know that the show does reach out to people, but also they encourage. Like, here's the thing, okay? Let me, let me clarify some things. Is it possible that if your girlfriend goes out with her girlfriends to a nightclub, especially, she will get hit on by dudes? Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Will she enjoy it is an entirely separate question. Is an entirely separate reality. Will she follow through on it? Well, again, at that point, you're safe. Okay? Because if she does, then you were already dating a fucking horrible person to begin with. You understand? Like, that's not, that's not your person. That's not your partner. That's a bad person. So looking at that unique situation and then casting judgment upon uh, the entire uh, womankind is fucking psychotic, okay? That's it. And the idea that it's 70% of women that you're slamming puss, like, that shit is so fucking dumb. I mean, it's so stupid. I don't even know what to say. <sighs> All those girls at the club are cheating in Miami are cheating because their boyfriend is a crypto bro currently at home shooting a misogynistic podcast. Yeah. My fiance goes out with her friends and I know she gets hit on. And I think it's really funny because I know she turns them down because we love each other and she's not a piece of shit. Yeah. Except guys that are so deeply insecure will hear you say that and go, oh, that's copium. Your wife is fucking people because that's what my wife would do in that situation. Uh, I'm not insecure. If you let your girl go alone to the club, 100% she's getting hit on and 70% chance she's getting piped. Can't tell you how many cheating girls I've slammed out for quickies working in a club. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. 99% of men cheat. So ladies, if your man doesn't cheat, do something nice for him today. He's a great guy. Pass it on. <laughs> Oh, that's a great copy pasta. Dude, listen, it's fucking hilarious to just like live life constantly paralyzed by fear that there is a random dick that is going to be hitting your girl, okay, your girl, your girlfriend, your partner, like the motherfucker, like Muhammad Atta in the Twin Towers, okay? You never know, man. You never know. One faithful morning, you're going to work, and then boom, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's 9-11, okay? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That is a ridiculous way to live. You don't know, dog? She's going out? Yeah, you think she's going out to get groceries. Meanwhile, the only grocery she's getting is penis at the Publix. Okay, she's getting dicked down by the butcher, dude. Boar's head? How about his penis head? That's what she's getting. <laughs> Mr. President, a second dick has hit your girl. <laughs> uh, it's so dumb. Ay, ay, ay. I don't understand how people don't recognize that when they say things like this, they're just demonstrating how insecure they are and not really much else. You know what I mean? Like, that's all you've done. When you, when you talk like this, you're just talking about how insecure you are, like what you're fantasizing about, how you think that, like, how you think... Um, your your uh, partner how, how little trust you have in your partner it also stems from like how i guess you view women a little bit you know what i mean it's not insecurity it's reality it's a realistic way to live it's not insecurity it's reality really you think it's a realistic way to live in reality when you think that like anytime your your partner is not in eyesight that she might be cheating on you like, including going to the grocery store. That's crazy. 
I hope one day a lot of you will grow out of this, okay? One day, I think. Because this is, you know, this is not a, a good way to live. Not. Very bad way to live. It's a miserable reality to live in. Wait, did he say something else? I can't see now. I fuck so many moms at the grocery store, dude. It's bananas. Yeah. When it, dude. Yo, when I was a fucking cashier, dude, holy fuck, you wouldn't. You wouldn't believe the amount of puss I crushed, dude. I slammed so much puss, dude. <laughs> you don't fucking get it, dog. I fucking slam puss. I be slamming puss at the grocery store, dude. Fucking hell. <laughs> what? Life is kind of miserable just saying. Okay, well, you've demonstrated my point perfectly now. I am 42. Women are all the same. You will come to realize that. I'm 42, Hassan, and this guy are wrong. Don't trust anyone. Please understand that everyone has ulterior motives and people are selfish. Don't lock your girl up and follow them around, but always recognize their behavior and look for signs because they will cheat. Jesus Christ, brother. Who hurt you? Holy fuck, dude. My oh man, how are you going to be 42 years old and an incel? Like, that's crazy. Fellas, be on the lookout. All women are the same, okay? All they want to do is subscribe to the Hasanabe broadcast at the top of the hour to avoid the fucking ads. And before you know it, they used your credit card. They took $5 out of your fucking credit card, and they subscribed to that sexy guy Hasanabe they see on screen, you know? It's fucked up. Sometimes they also use your Amazon Prime account that they connect to their Twitch account to also avoid seeing the ads at the top of the hour, okay? And then sometimes they get gifted a sub by others. It's real fucked up, dude. But at least when you log on to your Twitch, you share with your girlfriend. You get to no longer see the three-minute ad breaks at the top of the fucking hour. You know what I'm saying? I guess there's a... You know, positive silver lining to the situation. Am I right? At the top of the hour, a three-minute ad break will come for you regardless. The Raging Hoppa. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. 813 Cinnabite Girl. Thank you for the five gifted subs at the top of the hour, allowing 15 people to no longer see the ads. Here's a three-minute ad break now. You let your World Trade Center go alone to New York. 100% she's getting hit on by a plane and 70% chance she's falling over. I can't tell you how many Twin Towers I've slammed out for global terrorism working for Al-Qaeda. <laughs> what the fuck? I think there's a multitude of reasons why dudes behave like this. Some of them are hurt. Some of them have been hurt. Okay. Some of them have been cheated on. Others have seen it happen to their friends or seen it in like movies or whatever. And, but ultimately, they're all uniquely miserable. Can't live like that, man. That's crazy. And after a while, you have to understand that level of fear that lives in your heart at all times. Okay. That level of fear that exists inside of you stops you from having healthy relationships with people. It saddles you, okay? You're now living with that baggage. Every time you communicate with someone who you want to riz up, it comes across in, in one way or another, okay? I'm not saying that there aren't women out there who, are, uh, who aren't pieces of shit. There certainly are. Some of them even go on these fucking podcasts, you know what I mean? But that should not guide you to believe unjustifiably that like all women are like this and every woman's going to cheat on you. Like that's crazy. You need a fucking therapist, man. That's what you need. You need to like, you know, you need to, you need to work out these anxieties that you have. Have you seen this TikTok that went viral? Insoles were using it as bait. Where 
34 MKD 50. Thank you for the 50 gifted subs. It's like saying you don't want to date men because women serial killers exist. Yeah. What? Oh, you mean uh, it's like saying uh, female serial killers exist so you don't want to date women? Is that what you're saying? It's like women saying they don't want to date men because serial killers exist, in my opinion. Because the likelihood that... The likelihood... That a that a woman that your your female partner is going to cheat on you is probably around you know maybe maybe even more likely than you will be serially killed. You know what I mean? Not like domestically abused, not sexually assaulted, but like serially killed, right? You're dealing with that much distrust in others. That's probably trauma, and you should consider seeking more support. Yeah, one hundred percent. Piped right now. I just know it. You think women who give up on dating are dumb, but this is the dating pool, these horrible chatters? Yeah, the dating pool is reflected in a political commentator's Twitch chat. Go outside right now. You're getting a five-minute timeout. You're going to go take a breather outside, okay? You just told 50,000 people that you're just the most online person on the planet. That's all you did just now, okay? That's crazy. Yeah. All, this, is how, this is how the dating pool works. It's just like they're all, they're all permanently indoors, okay? People to reach out to them. And why would someone do that? Well, for the models on OnlyFans, despite the fact that they're getting shamed. 50K, more like 20K bots. Okay. 33,000 humans and fucking 20,000 bots. Is that good? Are you happy? There you go. On the show, it I've heard that it can lead to some pretty good conversion for their platform. And it's funny how that works. Interesting. Some of the women even use this as an opportunity to Uno reverse the show and farm them for viral TikTok clips. The ladies to rate their looks on a scale of one to 10. One. But come on. One. I mean, isn't this a humbleness test? Like you say something over six and they humble you anyway. Yeah, but I... Is that too low? Five. Yeah, but... but... Oh my God. <laughs> and then, and then the funny thing is like, they just get owned like this because they're so fucking predictable. I love that. That is pretty funny. I take it back. I think women should go on these podcasts. Eh, probably not, but... You're not supposed to know. I asked Farha, the person from this clip, why she went on the whatever podcast, and she said, I was surprised at how shaky the host values slash how easily debunkable slash inconsistent so much of his talking points are. It really just surprised me that a podcast like this is popular in this day and age, and the theme slash concept feels so outdated. So basically, I went on to go and say obvious things that debunk the show. Even though Brian may deny it, the show clearly has an agenda which you can tell from like everything they've ever produced that's crazy that he denies it they have an agenda that's like that's like me saying i don't have an agenda you know what i mean like i do i admit it all the fucking time dude i yeah yeah i think people should value that level of honesty it's so dumb If you let your girl go alone to the club, 100% she's getting stalked and 70% chance she's getting slaughtered ritualistically. I can't tell you how many loyal girls I've slammed into a shallow grave working as a serial killer. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, Jesus Christ. This copy pasta is getting fucking out of hand, dude. Ay, ay, ay. Your agenda is to serve children DraftKings ad, X you Karen. Yeah, that's my agenda. <laughs> Dude, you're never going to understand us because your body count is 100 plus. My girl is getting pounded in the living room right now. They always cheat. Uh, produced. She thinks dating is hard for women. <laughs> LOL. He like had to let you know what his opinion was. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Like you could have just left it. She rates herself a 10. Delusion. Brian kicked out disrespectful girl must watch vibe is so bad it's really not you're the one who made no, it all it's been bad the whole time and i'm sorry it was bad I, when I, people started I, disagreeing I with you coming on sorry it was my fault okay well, you can go really you I mean. can leave get up leave 
You're shaking too now. Hey, we're both shaking. Okay. Wait, you're yeah, literally can't hold your camera. You can leave. You. you can leave. Wait, what? I thought she said you were shaking. No, I'm just joking. Dude, these guys are so. They're boss mode, dude. I'm going boss mode on a fucking 22 year old. Okay. I'm going fucking boss mode on a on a <laughs> poli sci major that came on my fucking podcast, dog. She's a college sophomore, okay? And I'm going boss mode on her. I'm fucking kicking her out of my podcast. And that's what you're supposed to do. That's I'm hard. I'm fucking hard, dude. <laughs> oh, it's so sick. More like boss baby. True. Rage quit. <laughs> wow. Not to, not to be dumb, but how do they even recruit the girls with the podcast? What do you mean? It's clout, dude. Quite literally, that's it. These are, look, in a lot of instances, okay, especially with, like, the fresh and fit ones, right, um, there is also a, a little bit of a self-selecting sampling bias, right? Like, the people that want to go on a podcast like this are oftentimes going to, you know, they're going to have, like, a weird takes from time to time. Not every single one, but certainly... They're, they're there to promote themselves, okay? Because the thing is, the thing is, these, these girls know that it's like a clever business decision to go on a fucking incel podcast like this because those horny little incels, they never actually go outside. They never actually meet women. And the only time they can get like any kind of sexual gratification is by subscribing to the girls only fans you are trespassing and you have to leave dude what the fuck he went npc mode dude that's awesome he went Can't stop you violated the law pay the court a fine or serve your sentence your stolen goods are now forfeit that's awesome. That's he he literally did that. That's great. <laughs> Get out. I can't give her my number? No, you have to leave. Why now you got my Damn. Number. Oh yeah, she was so disrespectful. Oh my god, dude, so so disrespectful. Last but certainly least is the chat. The show is live streamed, which allows you to see the women hating Forfeit your goods in real time and donate, of course. <laughs> Oh, sorry, hold on just a sec. Mount underscore whatever is donated $200. Don't give My Chemical Home a firearm. My <laughs> Chemical that? Home it's a firearm. That, I guess that's your nickname. By the way, can I, um, can you give me one of those, um, those fingerless gloves for me to wear? Uh, the chat behavior typically goes like this. If a man is speaking, it's W man, big W Chad. And then if a woman is talking, they'll say dumb lady, bad lady, and then they'll say Bro, we are literally devolving. As a society, we straight up are devolving. We are unironically cavemen, okay? Like, we, we are skipping the step of, like, medieval peasantry, and, and we're going to, like, Neanderthal territory. It's crazy to watch. Uh, bad lady. Ooh, woman bad. <laughs> Man good. <laughs> What the fuck? It's nuts. It's fucking nuts. I you you just you now have people who legitimately think that the news cycle in its entirety covering whatever is relevant in the moment is actually just NPCs, okay? Is is actually just there to guide NPCs. You have People believing in uh, ice trolls, okay? You have people believing in wizardry and magic. You have children who think they can, you know, astral project to Hogwarts. You have people also getting upset at made-up characters in movies and shit and how they behave in the made-up world as though it's real and it says something about the real world. I mean, people don't understand reflections. They think mirrors are magic. They think mirrors are in the magic mirror universe. And, and they question how mirrors can see what is behind the piece of paper. We fucking lost it, dude. It's over. It's done. Hello, everybody.
Oh, what the fuck? This is the Colleen shit that you guys want me to cover, Spam right? Spam 304, which is a little code. And it's the most middle school shit I've ever seen. So. I also saw okay. 304 in the chat. What does what that does mean? What does 304 mean? Area code, does... probably. It was like... <laughs> If you let your dog go alone to the dog park, 100% she's getting pet and 70% chance she's getting farted on. Can't tell you how many stinky dogs I've pooted all over for funsies living on a park bench. Jesus Christ, dude. Yo, that's so dumb. Stop. Uh, oh, geez. So stupid. Wasn't that funny? Farting on dogs is always funny. It's objectively funny. Nice. They don't know. They don't know. That's the joke. For those who don't have their TI-84 Silver Edition on hand, if you type 304 into a calculator and turn it upside down, it spells ho. I gotta pee. So thanks for coming to we'll class today. There will be a quiz. 304 caught lying on whatever podcast. 304 with double standards. It's like everywhere. It's like a universal code for incels. <laughs> 304 is a little nostalgic for me because it takes me back to a more wholesome time where we used to spell hello and boobs in our calculator. Sounds like these guys need a 5318804. Hobbies. The chat is another example of Brian being a meek little worm. He won't come out and body shame his guests himself, but if someone in the chat does it, he'll laugh at it or he'll offer his full-throated support for the low, low cost of $99. Fat phobia incoming, by the way. Oh. Astrology because- Hold on just a sec. Mike Davis donated $200. Thank you, Mike Davis. I don't mean to make this personal, but only in this Western backward culture can a hippo have a roster. And these females who will shriek at Mike Davis were seconds away from bursting in laughter, so STF you. Sorry, just addressing the elephant in the room. <laughs> um, do you ever that's obviously directed towards you uh I love how it interrupts the flow of conversation hang on just a sec everybody touchgrass69 just sent us 200 dollars to say the most evil shit in the world and i'm gonna let him this happens throughout the show in fact i would say it's like a, a core tenant of the show that there's just a gaggle of guys sitting around spending hundreds of dollars to virtually catcall and heckle women paying an influencer for exclusive access to their content i don't know bro sounds like simp behavior to me but even worse than that some guys will spend hundreds okay to be fair uh to be fair they also pay for their only fans as well let's be real like that's 100 percent what they're doing as soon as they're done calling them whores like the whole shtick, really. Yeah, we're going to do the Colleen Ballinger situation, which is ironic because her apology is quite literally the reason why I'm finding out about the situation to begin with. So congratulations to Colleen Ballinger for finally getting me to fucking talk about the, the situation. Hundreds of dollars throughout the course of an episode to have an ongoing conversation with the panel. I watch someone do this in a four hour episode. He was asking the women to rate his appearance and it culminated in one of the saddest screenshots of all time. YouTube has a max of $500 a day. I can't give any more money. Please have the girls rate me. <laughs> please, I would give more, but the website won't let me. Please, please tell me if I'm hot or not. I just feel like it's relevant to consider the community being fostered here where a bunch of lost men are hating on women that they privately seek the approval of or publicly for <laughs> for five hundred dollars the only fans are cheaper by the way and you they let you message them and on top of all of this the podcast is so boring and <laughs> no one seems to be having a good time brian is the okay that's actually a really good take and this is genuinely a unique one that i haven't even considered every single video short clip long form whatever i've seen of this podcast the guests and the fucking host are outright miserable, dude. They're always looking so fucking sad. They look so sad all the time. 
What are they doing? It's just the most hurt podcast of all time. The most reluctant misogyny profiteer that I have ever seen. And I'm not even convinced that he believes what he's saying. I don't like these terms like alpha and high value or what high is status. It? Is it a red pill, pill man or what is it? Red what do you guys okay. call it? I'm okay with the red pill. I even saw that you retweeted a video of someone, you know, of one of the hosts calling one of the girls a dumb bitch and then it goes into the meta of the person watching it calling the girl a dumb bitch and then it goes into the meta of someone watching and calling that a dumb bitch. You know what the show does. You know what it is. Wait, you, did I even, I don't know if I retweeted that. I'm not sure if I reposted that on my Twitter feed. However, if you're talking about the Freedom Tunes cartoon, it doesn't, it, which whether is or not you Miracle, which was not produced by whatever. So you, you don't think that anyone watches that show, this show for that? For what? At least on shows like Fresh and Fit, there's some dynamism to the hosts. Like they're the worst people you've ever seen or heard, but hey, they're charismatic. In contrast, Brian is just flat. Even the title of the show is just whatever. <laughs> you know, he's like if Toby from the office hated women, it's not even entertaining when he kicks people off. I've chosen to redirect the, con the conversation. You can either accept that or you can leave. Your choice. Yeah, for people out there who like are listening to this, get out. I'm, I'm literally get out. about to get leave. Out. Yeah, I'm out. Get out. Brian can even put down the fork. And then of course- What's up with the frame rate, by the way? Every time he gets animated, like the fucking podcast breaks, this is the second time I've seen a video go Like what what's what's happening there? Of course, this woman drove two of the other guests. Peace out. This is Sparta! See ya. Damn, he's a fucking bad bitch, dude. He's so sick. I love kicking women out of my misogyny podcast when they make my feelings hurt. Like what men do. Kind of like going to war, but like way more soy. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> leave. please leave the podcast. You're hurting my feelings. I don't like it. I don't like having my feelings hurt. Basically, I'm I'm the same as the guy going to war, doing trench warfare by yelling at random college graduates and freshmen, sophomores, the sophomores. I'm gonna get up too, but thank you for having me. Okay, you can. It's nice meeting you. <laughs> nah, you can't sit here. You gotta get out. You gotta get out. We drove together. Okay. <laughs> Make it a... This whole squad leaving or what? Well, we got make, a whole squad. They make it a hat together. trick then. He is so proud of himself for kicking three people off. But it's, it's like a technicality because... It's like, dude, dude. Why is this... It's like flexing that your podcast is bad and you just suck at like making entertaining content. I don't understand. <laughs> my podcast is the fucking worst dog it's so sick uh, i tell i tell all my guests like <laughs> i want every single one of my guests to be hurt and upset by the time they're done with the podcast it's fucking awesome please leave please leave please you know what that is that's like the fucking kid who's like it's my basketball and you guys can't play any longer if you don't want to play with me like you lost one game, man. Just sit it out. You know what I mean? Don't be a fucking bitch. Everybody hates that kid. It's a podcast where the host is that kid, okay? You fucking crybaby. And all these goddamn losers, I assume, in his audience are also that kid. And they're like, here's $500. Uh, your guest is a whore. Oh, I was so sick when you kicked your guest out. Please kick your guest out again so sick because she drove the other two. Oh, was that a hat trick it's like oh i'm so cool dude i'm a football star because i kicked off three ladies from my podcast it's like <laughs> it's the title of the episode heated debate three girls kicked off hat trick please take yourself seriously. how many views did that get the title of the episode heated debate bro that got three hundred and twenty two thousand views oh it's the live stream but even then, god damn, dude, fucking hell. 
Wait, three girls kicked off. Hat trick. Please take yourself seriously. You did not kick three people off. The other two are a technicality. I'm not even convinced that he is doing this for any reason other than the fact that Fresh and Fit also do it. Shout out to Fresh and Fit for the inspiration. Check them out on YouTube. I watched my friend Noah's video that briefly touched on. <laughs> I learned from the best, dog. I learned from the best, dog. It's the fucking, it's the coolest. <laughs> when we get fucking owned by ladies that we invited on our podcast and then we get like real pissy and we start pissing and pooping in our diapies dude it's so fucking sick everybody goes yeah i want to be like that that's cool <laughs> on this but it's funny to see that this man's own audience is starting to turn on him for not being masculine enough and i can't feel bad because he's been profiting off of this, which is sad because at the end of the day, it seems like a guy half-heartedly going for a cash grab, which he's done before because prior to the whatever podcast, Brian made prank videos. And hey, aren't misogyny podcasts the prank videos of the 2020s? True, Jarvis. God damn, great fucking, great points all around. Great video. Shouts out to Jarvis Johnson, folks. Think these podcasts make incels worse? I mean, their incels are already at the bottom, dude. I don't know how else they could get worse. At least they're not like directing them to kill people, right? Whatever used to be a good prank channel, dude fell off into oblivion and resorted to this type of content.